Hi everyone, welcome to Black Cat Kitchen. I'm Daniela, and today we're making my favorite holiday pie, sweet potato pie. I'm going to show you how to make this recipe completely from scratch, but you can always use a store-bought pie crust if pastry's not your thing. Let's get into the recipe. You'll find a list of ingredients and measurements in the description below. Preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Pierce your washed sweet potatoes all over. This allows for some steam to escape so that your potatoes don't burst in the oven. You'll need 425 grams or 15 ounces of sweet potato for this recipe. But I'm throwing a few extra in for lunch since I have the oven on already. In the years of making this recipe, I've tried different variations of cooking my sweet potato, but roasting always gives the nicest texture to the final product. If you're using a store-bought pastry, jump to this section in the recipe. Into our bowl goes 200 grams or 1.6 cups of plain or pastry flour. To this, we're adding 100 grams or a quarter cup plus three tablespoons of butter that has been frozen and grated. I keep my grated butter in the freezer so that it stays extra cold. We're just going to start to rub the flour and butter together with our fingertips. You can do this in your food processor, but I much prefer making pastry by hand. I find this lends a more tender texture to the crust. When your mix is the consistency of sand, so it holds together in your hand and then falls apart if you rub it, that's when you're ready to add your water. Start with about two tablespoons of ice cold water. You'll slowly add in more water until all of your dough has come together. Once most of your bits of dough have come together, but you've still got a few loose scraggly bits, that's when you want to stop mixing. Pop your pastry onto some cling film, and then using the cling film while you wrap it up, create a circular shape. I like to flatten it down as much as I can so that it chills through quicker. This helps when we're rolling out the pastry later. This is a great time if you have any cracks at the edges of your pastry to sort of squish them back together and pop it into the fridge. We want to make sure our sweet potatoes are nice and roasted and soft. Our sweet potatoes have been in the oven for about 45 minutes and they're ready to come out and cool. I like to run a knife along the length of the sweet potato to allow some of that steam to escape because we want these to cool to room temperature. Turn it down to 190 degrees Celsius or 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Time to roll our pastry. Dust your work surface with some additional flour. As long as you keep your flour to butter ratio two to one by weight, you'll always have a perfect pastry. You'll want to roll your pastry out to about five millimeters thick. Now transfer your pastry into your pie dish. I like to roll mine back on my rolling pin to gently lift it and put it into my dish. Tuck your edges down by lifting the edge of the pastry and pressing into the sides of the pie dish. Trim the excess pie dough, leaving about two centimeters or so of pastry around the edge of your pie, but don't throw away that extra pastry. I'm going to show you how to use it in a minute. Now for the perfect pie edge, you're going to tuck the overhanging pie crust under the pastry that's in the dish. That cut edge should just be sitting under the edge of the pie plate. Once your edge is completely tucked, we're going to flute all the way around the edge of the pie. I like to dust my fingers with flour, then using my thumb and index finger with one hand and my index finger with the other, I create little divots all the way around the pie. Dock the bottom of your pie with a fork. This will allow any air to escape if it's gotten trapped in the bottom of your pie. If you've finished assembling your crust and your sweet potatoes are still hot, set it in the fridge to chill. With that leftover pastry, I'm going to make beautiful autumn leaf cutouts for the top of our pie. Roll it out to about the same thickness, about five millimeters, and cut out whatever shape you like. These are going to bake on a separate tray. I'm separating one of the eggs that I'm going to be using for our filling so that I can use the egg white now to brush both our little decorations for the top and the bottom of our pie once we've blind baked it. I've added a little bit of water to my egg white and I'm just whisking it up to get rid of any really long runny bits. Brush the tops of your cutouts with the egg whites. These are going to bake while our pie crust is blind baking. Then while the egg white is still wet, sprinkle with some granulated sugar. I pre-bake this crust to make sure it has a beautiful crispy texture on the bottom of our pie. We don't want any soggy bottoms. I'm using pie weights, but you can use dried rice or dried beans, whatever you have available to you. Get a piece of parchment that's bigger than your pie and scrunch it up into a tight ball. Then open it up and press it down into your pie crust. Now pour your pie weights on top of your parchment paper and spread them out so that they're completely covering the bottom. And into the oven. 
Take your pie crust out after 15 minutes and remove those weights. Now we're going to brush it with our egg white mix to really make sure we seal in that crunchiness and bake it for another five minutes. The egg whites also help the custardy filling stay put and a little egg white on the edge for a nice glossy finish. And back into the oven. Our decorations are beautifully golden, so let's take them out of the oven. Once your sweet potatoes are cool enough to handle, you'll want to peel back the skins and scoop the flesh into your food processor. If you haven't got a food processor, you can use a hand mixer or mash them by hand. I know a lot of people who don't like pumpkin pie, but they love this sweet potato pie. Get your sweet potatoes nice and smooth with your implement of choice. I'm going to add the rest of the custard ingredients into the food processor, but you can definitely do this by hand. To our sweet potato puree, we're adding in half a cup or 160 grams of maple syrup, a quarter cup or 50 grams of brown sugar, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and a pinch of allspice. Let's whiz that all together before adding in three large eggs and one egg yolk, the one we separated earlier. And finally in goes half a cup or 113 grams of double cream. Give it a little stir to make sure that nothing's stuck to the bottom. Pull the blind baked pie crust out of the oven and pour your custardy filling into the center. Now turn your oven down to 170 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to bake our pie for 35 to 40 minutes until the edges are set, but the center still has a little bit of a wibble. Put a pan on the rack under the pie to catch any spillage. You can see the center is still dark, which is exactly what we want. Because this is a custard, we want to make sure not to overbake it. The edges have souffléed up, but they'll sink back down into the pie crust as it cools. And you can see that tiny little wibble in the middle. Time to decorate. Place all of your pastry cutouts along the edge of your pie in whatever fashion you like. Traditionally, it's served plain or with a whipped cream, but I like to infuse my whipped cream with some extra maple syrup to really bring out those flavors. Into a bowl, pour 100 milliliters of cold double or heavy cream and about one tablespoon of pure maple syrup, and then just get to whisking. Once it holds soft peaks, you're ready to adorn your slice of pie. watching if you're looking for another sweet treat or dessert video check out this one here and if you liked this video give us a thumbs up and if you didn't like this video give us a thumbs down let me know in the comments below do you prefer pumpkin or sweet potato pie we'll see you in the next video